Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Sonova's True Crime Files on YouTube. Today we'll be talking about a missing persons case out of Canada, and the victim's name is Charles Horvath. Today's case was submitted by one of Sonova Inc.'s wonderful guest bloggers. His name is Ian. Thank you so much, Ian, for submitting this case. On May 11th, 1989, a 20-year-old Charles Horvath I have a hard time saying that word for some reason. Charles Horvath. So we're going to call him Charlie. <laughs> so Charles, he faxed a letter from British Columbia to uh, to England. I believe it's Yorkshire. I have to look here. Yeah, to Yorkshire, England, to his mother to say that he was looking forward to seeing them in August. They were going to celebrate their birthdays together. I guess their birthdays was really close. And this year was going to be really special because Charles was turning 21 and his mother was turning 40. So um, she got that letter on May 11th, 1989. Unfortunately, a little short time later, he was supposed to call and make arrangements and she they were going to fly out from their um, different locations and they were going to fly out to Hong Kong to see each other. So this was going to be kind of a big deal. Um, but unfortunately, she received no other word from him. And they wouldn't be able to celebrate their birthday together that year. Now, um, he was supposed to be hitchhiking across Canada. He was he was um, hiking and he was very outdoors person. And so this was this was not uncommon for him. Unfortunately, when the time came for him to make those arrangements, to make that phone call, to buy the airplane ticket, all those things, um, he never showed up. And so that left his mother, Denise, wondering what in the world happened and no real good way to get a hold of her son. Charlie was declared missing as of August of that year. And the RCMP, the, the Mounties, were sent out to look for him. And the mother had called, Denise had called several, you know, periodically to ask them to search for him, um, but he was officially classed as a missing person in August. Now, um, they found the, the mounted police found out that he camped in a tiny campsite at the Royal Bank Orchard Park in Kilowana um, near British Columbia in May of that year, and then but the manager of that campground said that it was strange because all of a sudden in the middle of May, Charles had left everything behind. He left his tent, all of his belongings, everything behind and just disappeared. So nobody knows what happened to him. Now, unfortunately, by the time the RCMP came along, most of his belongings had been destroyed, um, but there was a few things left and they gave them to the mother, Denise, um, but nothing that was left really pointed in any direction. Now, for a while, the RCMP believed that he had disappeared. There were some family members that were contacted and he had said something about just running away and just appearing. Um, but after a while, that became um, that became less and less likely. Now, looking for a missing loved one is stressful enough, but then we're talking a entire country, a, an entire different continent. And so Denise had to travel from England to Canada, and she did so every year to search for her son and put out the posters and do everything that she could. Well, in March, it says March 17th of 1992, she received an unsigned letter on the doorstep of her hotel room. Now it said, seen your ad in the paper looking for your son. I saw him on May 26th. Now there was no way of knowing if this was a prank or if this was legitimate. Of course, law enforcement went ahead and looked into it either way. But uh, so they, this, this uh, letter wasn't signed, of course, it, but it said, seeing your ad in the paper looking for your son, I saw him May 26. We were partying and two people knocked him out, but he died. His body is in the lake by the bridge. Now, um, the bridge that he was talking to the lake was, I can't even pronounce that, but anyways, it was just outside of Kelowana. Now, um, Law enforcement sent divers out and looked and looked and they never found a body. And obviously, whoever this anonymous tipster was, was watching the, this, the dive team because that evening, she got another letter on her doorstep that said, the divers are looking on the wrong side of the bridge. They need to look on the other side. Now, what is really strange is if that wasn't strange enough, the law enforcement sent their divers out 
looked on the other side of the bridge and they found a body, but it was not the body of Charles Horvath. It was a the body of a 64 year old man. I can't imagine what kind of emotional roller coaster this poor woman's going through right now. She's traveling out of the country um, and trying to find her son and trying to, you know, um, to do all these things. And it's not even in her local area. And then she gets this anonymous note and and they find a body and then it's not him. So I, I can't imagine the 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 chaos that this poor woman's going through. Um, and the Mounties eventually, for a long time, like I said before, a long time, they thought that he had just decided to disappear. But by 2010, their serious crime unit um, has taken up the case and they have declared him presumed dead. Over the years of this mother's investigation, she has discovered that her son was most likely murdered by members of a specific biker gang staying in Kelowna at the time. Now, um, she doesn't have, law enforcement doesn't have any any major proof of this, but this is where um, her, her, her research has brought her. So this is one of those cases where even though it was 1989, there is still no closure in this case. We still have a mother who is actively trying to find information. And so I'm going to put this out there. It's it's a short video. I'll try to find some pictures of Charles to put in with this video. But this is a mother who's still in pain after all of these years. And so if you have any information about her son, we ask that you please contact someone, contact the RCMP, contact us, contact somebody so this mother can have some peace because this has been 1989. This has been so many years that this mother has had to carry this. So if you have any information, we ask you to come forward. If you don't have any information, but you would still like to help, we ask you to share the video. We ask you to share the blog post. Um, this is, like I said, this is a guest blog that Ian has submitted. And uh, so I, we ask you to share the blog post. We ask you to share the missing persons posters, everything you can do. And every time you share, you never know who you're going to touch and who that that uh, post is going to connect with. So you might share it to the one person who has the key to solving this case. So thank you for watching another episode of Sonova's True Crime Files on YouTube. Today's episode is brought to you by Bones Coffee Company. You can forget about boring coffee when you drink Bones Coffee. Not only do they offer a variety of flavors such as strawberry cheesecake and maple bacon, they are a family-owned company that puts great detail not only in their coffee, but in the artwork that comes on each individual bag. Bones Coffee has a coffee club that will deliver your favorite coffee to your door every month. If that wasn't enough, they also have some amazing swag to offer. Check out Bones Coffee Company today. I'll have my affiliate links in the show notes for you.